So it is very, very exciting to welcome up on the stage woman like Upile Chisala, who talks about coming from the margins. We'd like to invite her to bring those margins into the main stage and to introduce us to some of her storytelling by way of Malawi, Oxford, New Mexico, storyteller, woman like Upile Chisala. Make some noise. Yeah. try to not fall out of this chair because I'm nervous. <laughs> Here you are, black and woman and in love with yourself. You are terrifying. They are terrified, as they should be. So um, I'm with, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to read some poems from my first collection, which is called Soft Magic. And then I'm going to read some poems that are in my latest collection that I'm still working on, actually, um, by the name of A Fire Like You. And then finally, I'll read uh, some poems from my book, Nectar. And uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, please excuse the fact that my poems don't have any titles, so we'll both have to figure out when the next one is coming on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying, okay, for the next collection, there will be names um, for every uh, one of the points. Today and all days, I am thankful for women of color who love, write, create, emote from the root, and never apologize for their magic. So I know everyone else has been like reading poems in different languages, and I'm sorry that my only poem in Tijo is a little bit dirty. So, <laughs> so I'll read it. I won't translate it. Yeah, the translation's in the book. Wenzi, Dine Nyanja, Sandi Sambire. And then the last book, poem from Soft Magic that I'll be reading. If you are a miracle on thunder thighs, wrapped in sacred skin, this is a poem to remind you to stop and feel the life traveling in your body. You are many great things. You are many great things. Uh, so the latest collection is really like my heart's work. And it has a lot uh, more long poems. <sighs> but. Writing it has been such a journey, and it's, yeah, it's like facing your trauma, and facing your fears, and facing all your sorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really close to me, so here are a few poems from a fire like you. You cannot dive into their mouths and fish out a sorry. That's not how it's ever worked. And what good is a sorry? you almost drowned for. Uh, so, <laughs> I miss my gogo. <laughs> I miss my gogo so much, so this is a poem for my gogo and your gogo um, and all the other grandmothers who went to bed too early. Gogo is resting. At least you're hoping she is. You're hoping God convinced her to put her feet up and to watch anything but the news. <laughs> You're hoping she isn't too sad and that her giggle still travels in her body and that her warmth is still touching everyone she meets. You're hoping your gogo is missing you less than you're missing her. you've braved lately. <clears throat> Bills that linger, silence that cuts, mothers that lug around pain, gods who don't show up, the dead who aren't getting any rest, 
brothers who sink into their father's habits, fathers who aren't sorry, lovers who make doors out of your tiniest flaws and walk out with parts of you. But darling, remember, healing never forgets to come and soften the day. This is a poem about a hard home, because uh, too many of us grew up in them. One, are you ungrateful for wanting your forgiveness to look nothing like your mother's? No, I don't think so. Two, you are taught that men are gods, that God is a man, that God is your father, that your father is God. Three, in your story, Home and wound are synonymous, just like mother and worshiper. Four, what kind of love grows from a wound? Five, are you ungrateful if you celebrate the day you left home? I mean wound, I mean worshiper, I mean mother, I mean father and God? No. Six, growing up where you did and how you did, you know good and well that staying is only half of the story. Hey. And it may kick you in the pride every time, but the work of keeping a love warm and living is always worth it. Thank you. This is a poem about gaslighting because, hey, it gets lit. <laughs> Because you say it with the sweetest parts of you, and in the sweetest voice, and out of the sweetest mouth, I am honeyed by it, and fall into it, and crawl under it, and all of a sudden I'm the sorry one, and you are the savior. And all your cruel things are gone and forgotten, my darling, this is a violence. Yeah. You tell me I live in a panic, that my favorite houses are the ones that shake, that I wouldn't know love if it called me by my name. This is how you like to cut me down and call me twisted. This is how you forget you are the danger. This is a violence too, the art of making someone small, the art of turning someone on themselves, the art of tearing a pride limb from limb, the art of having the last word, the word that matters, the word that holds water. In love, there is no small violence and no rug to sweep it under. Yes. Uh, so this is a poem about the exes that left a bitterness. <laughs> Honest to God, I don't have enough teeth or tongue, or mouth to carry your name in conversation. <laughs> what was between us cut cruel and clean and fell graceless? Love that grows from a wound needs more tenderness than we gave it. Because when it shakes the house, nothing survives. Not a friendship, not a sweetness, not a kind word, not teeth or tongue or mouth to carry a name. Um, and this poem is about the survivors and those who went too soon because of HIV and AIDS. We learned it when we were younger. There are things you mustn't ask. There are loved ones who go thin and stop laughing and become a name on stone. There are loved ones who are left behind to take the pills and stay alive and pay the rent and never speak ill. We learned it when we were younger. Some things hurt and hurt again. So um, Nectar is my child. <clears throat> All of them are my babies, but Nectar brought me my voice um, and the backbone to actually use it. So, I'm going to leave you with some lessons from Nectar. 
This is my favorite poem ever. Like, if I could put this poem on everything, I would. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of obnoxious. You walk into my house and it's just everywhere. Um, um, it's mostly my favorite poem because when I was going to the States, people would ask me, like, oh, so what are you going to have people call you? Because the delay is difficult. I was like, mm, it's just five letters. Like, it's an easy name. Um, <laughs> You just have to imagine a little bit more. Like Americans don't have much imagination, and <laughs> and when they would see and when they'd see my name on paper, like U P I L E, let me tell you what they would say. They would say U pile. I said, Wow, you guys are a disaster. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so, sorry. I struggled at first, like, what will people call me? Because uh, my middle name is South African, so it's also difficult. Nombi uh, And I was like, nah, they can't call me that. Well, they call me Mary, which is like a name that my parents just gave me randomly. I was like, nah, they'll call me Ubile. So this is me claiming my name. So, here we go. There is a danger in letting people misname you. If you are a fire, do not answer when they call you a spark. So, these next two poems are about rejection because I think I faced so much rejection in my life because sometimes I'm chasing after something that was never intended to be mine now. And uh, you need to slow down sometimes and listen to your God or whatever it is you believe in and just chill out. That wasn't for you. It's not your portion. So <laughs> these are some poems about that. The practice of letting go of gone things and saying that wasn't mine, but mine is on the way. Part of growing in your truth and letting God do God things is closing doors you shouldn't have opened in the first place. Um, if I ever have a daughter, this was a poem for a daughter. Daughter, I hope you never have to crawl on your good bones to beg bad love to stay. And uh, this is the final poem I'll be reading. It's just a little cute lesson for you guys. Because healing is coming for some of us. We have to be intentional about it though. Um, and for those who haven't got there yet, who haven't realized they have a problem, um, this is just a poem for you. So whoever needs this poem, I've combined two because they're really short. I'll combine two. <laughs> I hope you never stop talking about your dreams and what you want out of this rough, beautiful life. You are lovely, 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 you are lovely and you belong here. Oh.